Welcome to Cowboys Flashback. I'm Britt Johnson. Week 9 of the Dallas Cowboys kicked off their first home game in 28 days against the Denver Broncos. The boys haven't beat the Broncos since 1995. And well, even though the Cowboys were a huge favorite going into the game, Dallas wasn't able to secure their seventh straight win of the season. Broncos win 32-16. Nate, I'll start with you. The, the poor ground game today for the Cowboys, it hasn't been, it's been a quite some time since we've seen them struggle like this, but was this in direct correlation with the struggles on the offensive line? Definitely. I mean, like I said, you know, you got to have continuity when you're playing on that offensive line. They didn't have that today. More importantly, they played a more physical brand of football. I think when they didn't, uh, was most successful on the fourth and uh, two and three plays like that right there, it builds confidence for your for your offensive line, you know, if you can make be successful in that right there. So it didn't happen. Yeah, I mean, these guys didn't play with any form of confidence at all. I mean, you saw it. I mean, Nate just alluded to it. These guys are over three on fourth down, I believe. So you had the coaches trying to initiate some form of confidence, right? Trying to steal something in them, and they just didn't execute. Offensively, on the offensive line, uh, they had Collins that showed up um, and plays his first, you know, real snaps here since the first game of the season. And then you had, you know, Terrence Steele, who had to switch over to the opposite side. Um, these guys were not in sync. They were being out physical. These guys were coming down from secondary and playing upfield. Um, these guys just weren't ready to play. They need to re regroup. Yeah, it definitely seems like a, a, just an off day all around. And you heard David Hellman ask the question about the blocked punt. And, and was that just one of those times where you look at it and you say, it's just not our day? Well, Zeke said you can't think that way, but you got to think that was definitely on the minds of the Cowboys because at that point they had an opportunity to get back in the game. Now, to be fair, the game started off hot with a 54-yard kickoff return by Tony Pollard. And, well, it kind of just plummeted downhill from there. Especially in the first half, did it feel like y'all had a problem getting into rhythm on offense today? Um, you know, I think we did. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we came out. We didn't play very well at all. Uh, we didn't execute. Um, and, I mean, just got to go back to work. Hindsight's twenty twenty, but can you think of anything this week I mean, was practice sloppy? How did you feel coming into this versus how you feel right now? Uh, we felt ready. We felt prepared going into this game. Uh, but, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, they were more physical than us. And, uh, you know, we didn't ex execute good enough. What, what happened with your right knee? Uh, you know, just something I've been dealing with the uh, past couple weeks. Uh, this guy landed on it. Is that a heating pad that you have on the bench? Yeah. Did it help? I mean, because you, you were still playing there late in the game. And yeah, yeah. It, it helped uh, just to keep keep it warm. and. And uh, I mean, that's just the biggest thing, uh, keeping it warm and, and uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, what, what is your best explanation for the team being flat, it seemed, both sides, everybody? Um, you know, I don't know if I have a have an explanation. Uh, you know, I just think that uh, we came out. Um, we didn't execute very well. Uh, they were more physical than us, and, and uh, I mean, we can't do that. You averaged five yards of carry in this game. It didn't seem like the run wasn't working, but I, I mean, is that just a, tied to the fact that you, you can't run as much when you're trailing that big, or how did you think it went versus, versus what you saw of them before the game? Um, you know, I think we ran the ball. We ran the ball all right today. Uh, but I think, you know, just all together, you know, offensively, we got to all do better. Uh, we got to protect the quarterback better. We got to be more physical. Um, you know, we got to execute. How do you keep that balance so you can the locker room as one of the team leaders that you're never as good as your best game and you're also not as bad as your worst game? Um, you know, just holding everyone accountable, just making sure everyone's held accountable, uh, making sure that, uh, you know, just doing all the right things, making sure that, that um, we're doing what we need to do to, to go win football games. It looked like y'all were going to get a really big break with the block punt at the beginning of the third. When something like that happens, especially when you're already trailing, how is it hard to overcome that from a mental aspect where you're like, damn, maybe it's just not our day? Um, I mean, that sucked. <laughs> that, 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 uh, that, yeah, it sucked that we didn't get the ball right there. But, uh, I mean, I think us together, we got to, you know, we can't be mentally, uh, you know what I mean? Like, we can't, we can't catch a break. We got to go and, uh, we got to go and, um, play the cards that we were dealt. With the Cowboys looking terrible on both sides of the ball, it's kind of pretty hard to give out a game ball for the week. A performance like that just didn't do it justice. But indeed, I searched low and high and found this week's recipient of Brit's game ball when we return. Dallas Cowboys flashback presented by Reliant. 
is brought to you by AT&T. Choose VA. Veterans get the benefits you've earned. Visit choose.va.gov. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by AT&T. I know I usually catch this ball coming into this segment, but Cowboys didn't catch a lot of balls this week, so I'm not going to chance it either. I was pretty puzzled when it came to determining who I was going to give this week's game ball to, but thank goodness we got to the last five minutes of the game and someone was able to make a few things happen, and that someone ended up being the same person, Malik Turner. Let me, we'll start, let me, before we get to the touchdowns here, let me look. Take us through the actual punt block, what happened there, what kind of call that was, and, and uh, it just seemed like the C parted there for you. Yeah, I mean, the C, I mean, Bones and Hat, you know, they're in there like mad men every week, dialing up stuff for us to execute. And uh, Bash, you know, he did his job on that and opened it up for me. And, um, you know, I was able to block a punt. You know, I get to be in the, in the list with a gift, so, yeah. you know, that's awesome. The, uh, is one of those weird out of the ball that bounces of maybe an inch or two this way probably goes backwards and we're, we're not talking about a weird rule and, and all that mm -hmm. stuff when after the punt what, what did you see after the block what did you I mean it uh you know you I mean that was my first time ever getting that close to blocking a punt I mean blocking it but um it should it should have been right off his foot it opened up so fast you know I got there really fast I got there really quick and um should have took it right off his foot it shouldn't have uh, gone anywhere should have yeah. scooped and scored but you know that, it'll come up again and, you know, make the right play, and we'll score on those. And the press box, we were confused of that rule a little bit. But it sounds like that's something you guys are well aware of once the ball goes past. Yeah. If it goes past the line of scrimmage, you know, if it, it goes behind it, you know, we can yeah. scoop it and score. But if not, they can still advance if it goes in front of it. No fault for Nashawn trying to do that, right? I mean, no, nobody I mean, was No, there's no fault smart. at all. Yeah, you know, it's all on us, and we'll be in that position again, and, then, you know, it'll, it'll go our way next time. Well, we're, we're researching right now how many times the guys blocked a punt and had two, two touchdown catches in a game. It's probably yeah. not, not normal. What happened there in the, at the end, you guys, I know, is you can call it, you know, end yeah. of the game, garbage time or whatever. I mean, I don't believe that we, we thought it was garbage time. With this group of men, you know, I, I talked to the guys after the game. You know, we never think we're out of it. And so me coming into the end of the game, you know, I'm in there with, with Dag, uh, everybody, the Zeke, um, Noah. Those guys are in there all the time, said, and, we're going on there to score, you know, Dalton making plays and, you know, I'm a part of a two minute drive and we get down there and score. So we never threw in the towel. And that's what I love about going to war with these guys. Every time I'm on the field, you know, they're going to get my best and I'm going to, and then I'm going to get theirs in return. Uh, obviously, uh, Michael Gallup should be coming back and yeah. you, you've been trying to like get in there. Yeah. Does this game kind of help you as far as, hey, maybe, maybe, you, you know, need your reps too and need your snaps? I mean, at the end of the day, if we would have came out with a win, I would have gave up those two touchdowns, you know. Um, I think everybody on the team knows that um, I can contribute in any way that I can, whether it be on special teams or on offense. Um, I'm so happy to get MG back. You know, we have a very explosive receiver room, very explosive offense. Uh, you weren't able to see that today, but, you know, you guys will. And, um, you know, we expect that. So can't wait to get him back. Were you frustrated at all just get with the injury happened when it was you were having a great training camp and then all of a sudden kind of a setback? Are you kind of... Were you, were you frustrated at all? And if so, are you glad that you're back and able to? Um, you know, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Uh, it's a blessing that I'm still here. I'm healthy now. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting in there tomorrow with the guys and drawing up some stuff for next, next week's opponent. Awesome. Thanks, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Appreciate Good game. Well, thank goodness to Malik Turner and those two touchdowns because the Dallas Cowboys were this close to getting their first shutout game at home in 100 games at AT&T Stadium. Minutes later, he secured a second touchdown. Those points are the only points the Dallas Cowboys scored in the game. We hear from players on this game's performance when we return. This segment was brought to you by AT&T. This segment is brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. Any given Sunday is a phrase that describes exactly what went down this week. Is this a setback or a setup for a comeback? Thanks. Uh, I mean, I think at the core of it, got out hit, got out worked. Um, you know, I told the D line there, um, 
There goes my rookie messing me up. No. Uh, yeah, I just think we. Can you can you just say, say that again? Yeah. yeah. Just, just, just tell us what what do you think happened there? I just think we got outplayed. We got uh, out hit. Um, you know, coach preached about it earlier this week. Uh, showing up with the right intensity, the right mindset, right energy uh, to out hit them. And uh, I think we didn't do that. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, we're gonna look at it tomorrow in the next couple of days, figure out what we did wrong, and uh, try to correct that so we can come out next week and get a win. So a lot of people want to say, "Oh man, this isn't this isn't the Cowboys. This isn't what they are." Uh, don't even worry about this tape. You know, burn it, and move on. But you said you can learn from this. Definitely can learn from it. Any any win or loss, you can learn from. Um, and you know, that's what we'll do. You know, I don't, I don't think we're gonna just burn it and, and move on. But uh, there's a lot of things we can take from it. Uh, we can learn from these experiences, and we'll come back better. As a defensive guy, to to say we got out hit, that that probably doesn't bode well for. The yeah. rest of the team and something you guys it'll it'll be thinking about all night probably. Yeah, I, I can't speak for the offense. I, I just know for the defense we had a lot of leaky yards. Um, you know, make contact with the running back, gets another three yards after contact, things like that. We got to clean up. We weren't really doing that earlier in the year. Um, everything else, you know, it's just like I said, we got kind of outplayed. A um, couple plays there, you know, explosive plays, things like that. So a lot of stuff wasn't working for us, but um, it's early on in the season, so. Got a lot of time to make up for it. When you're down 16 to nothing going into the third quarter, the best thing that can happen, other than a turnover, is get a stop and block yeah. a punt. How yeah. deflating was it to go back out on the field after that weird sequence? I mean, it, it, it hurts, uh, but you know, you just gotta gotta be prepared. You know, anything can happen in a game like that. Um, obviously, we want those momentum swings. We didn't get it right there, but uh, you know, we talk about neutral mindset, and uh, that's what we had to do right there. Get up. I uh, thought we had the ball, and appears we didn't. So you know, defense back up. We just gotta. Got to roll with those punches and come out better and come out on top. One more. I know that y'all didn't get the win and all that, but Micah Parsons flying around like that, making some sacks and doing that. I mean, you guys, you guys knew that you had a dog over there, but yeah. but I mean, is it just exciting to watch him grow? It is. It is. Uh, not not just him, but all the rookies. You got a lot of guys, uh, rookie or second year, that are playing and playing well, and uh, Mike is one of them. And I, you know, I've said it before. I'll say it again. You know, he can do whatever he wants in this league. We asked a lot from him. Uh, he felt he didn't have a good game a couple games ago, and like I said, he's making a lot of progress. We need that if we want to win some more games. This Broncos game was odd in the sense that you couldn't really put your finger on what actually went wrong here. Just talk about just overall. Just could you, there's no way you could have seen the game like this coming. You guys were rolling like this. Can you put your finger on maybe what happened here early? I can't really put my finger on it. Um, all I can say is we can go look at the film, see what happened, and correct it. You know, it was a funny game. You know, uh, you know we've been rolling high for a while, but you know it was a humbling, humbling game. And I, you know, it's good. We needed that, so we just gotta go look at it and make corrections. It seemed like they did a lot of running off, off tackle a lot. W. Is that something you guys had expected, or? Oh, uh, we thought they were more duo stretch team. You know, they changed the scheme up a little bit, but. You know, we got to make those adjustments and get the stop. Uh, but um, you got to give them to them. They did, their, they did their thing today. Seemed like there was three or four times on second and long, you guys had them pinned back, and they got a big chunk plays to make it manageable. Was that something that you saw, too, that was a problem? Maybe it was some, some draws? or That's that's why I said we got to go, go look at the film and, and get it corrected. You know, it was a, it was a whole lot going on. Uh, they was making big plays on the run and pass. So. We just gotta go look at the film and get it correct. You've had some games where you've been on the road and you see a lot of Cowboy fans. I guess it goes both ways, huh? Oh, for sure. They they definitely showed out today. Uh, the Broncos fans, it kind of surprised me being at home, but uh, yeah, it definitely goes both ways. How quickly are you ready to get back and face Atlanta this week? Oh, I'm, I'm ready today, honestly. You know what I'm saying? Uh, go watch the film, look at, look at it and see what I need to correct. But uh, I'm ready today though, honestly. All right, thank you. All right, appreciate, appreciate it, bro. Now, if we had to sum up what altered this game, it would definitely be this play we have coming up next. Brought to you by Ashley Home Store, the official furniture store of the Dallas Cowboys. This week's game altering play changed the momentum from bad to a moment of excitement to well, it got a lot worse. I'm here with Nick Eatman, DallasCowboys.com writer. And Nick, take it over. Please explain what happened in this moment here. Well, I mean, 
It, the first half couldn't have been worse, and, and the Cowboys are trying to – one thing you want to do in the third quarter is you, you've got to get the ball back, get a stop, get off the field, and this is what happens. The first drive and, and t Teddy Bridgewater, uh, it's a third and long, and Micah Parsons just gets to the quarterback. He's been he's had a great game, two and a half sacks. That was his mm -hmm. uh, third time to, to uh, bring the quarterback down. And that's everything you're wanting is, all right, they got off the field quickly, you got to get the ball back. Hey. Maybe if they blocked a punt, it could be even better. And here comes Malik Turner flying through. That looks like a block. I don't care what the stats say. <laughs> if it's not a, a block, then something weird is happening with the punter. And, and of course, you know, this whole thing was weird. Let's look at what Malik Turner, he, he it, the great job by Basham 93 to get a double team. Turner comes in, the ball hits his, his shoulder. So that is a block. But then the rule play comes in, and this is 25. We're watching Nashawn Wright. He, I mean, the guy's trying to make a play. I don't, you don't fault him right. for that. He doesn't get a handle on it, and the Broncos get it. And the rules state if the ball is touched behind the line of scrimmage, then and, and recovered by the the punting team, then they get a first down. Maybe that's something that the the rules committee should, should change because it was weird. I think a lot of confusion there is that right. it didn't result in a first down from a yardage standpoint. They still got the ball, and then what do you think happened? The Broncos drive down yeah. and kick a field goal. Instead of it, it, you know, it's 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 16 to nothing at that point, mm -hmm. and next thing you know, it's 19 nothing. Yes. Well, we actually heard from Nashawn Wright and what he had to say on that play. So let's take a look at that. Just take take us through the play of, of kind of what happened. It was a weird sequence and everything like that. Just what what did you see from your perspective? Well, first it was a great play by Malik. Uh, Malik got through, blocked the punt, and. Um, the ball was coming my way, and um, I'm at the line of scrimmage, so I know I'm not supposed to touch it when it passes the line of scrimmage. Um, so I shouldn't have touched it, but I was trying to scoop and score and make a play. Is that, have you ever been in, in a play like that, involved in something like that? No. Yeah. But you but you are coached to stand at the line of scrimmage and know that you can't touch it afterwards. You're just instinct is, let's go yeah. score. We need, need to make a play? Definitely. How frustrating is just a loss in general after the six game winning streak and then just come out like this? Uh, definitely doesn't feel good to lose. Uh, I mean, we're competitors, so you never want to lose. But the best part about it all is we get to come back next week and, and have an opportunity to go play and, and win the game. So, awesome. thank you, bud. Yeah, appreciate, appreciate it. it. You know, it just kind of reminds me of the Des caught it again, all over again. These rules need to be changed. We need to change some <laughs> rules. Well, for the first time ever since I've been doing this show, we actually are going to take a look at what social media has to say after our embarrassing loss. Let's dive in when we return. Dallas Cowboys flashback presented by Reliant was brought to you by AT&T, Reliant, an NRG company, and by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl. You know, as the host of this show, I was undefeated when it came to Victory Mondays. This is the first one that is not a Victory Monday, and I'm kind of sad about it, but we definitely have to check in with Cowboys Nation to make sure everybody's still doing okay, everybody's still feeling positive. Let's check in with Goose here, who said, just absolutely not our day-to-day, -day, hashtag Dallas Cowboys, and then said, come on, do something with a little stick. with the." Yeah, I know, we kind of all felt like that, right? But... We got to keep the momentum up. We got to stay happy and proud to be Cowboys fans. This person says, I'm a fan till the end. Win or lose, this is my team. And then he wrote this on the side. I'm a Cowboys fan. You can doubt my team. You can doubt my quarterback. I don't care. But don't ever doubt my loyalty. That is real Cowboys fans. That's, I feel like, how we're all kind of feeling right now, right? And Danny McRae, former Cowboy and currently working for the Dallas Cowboys, said, see you next week, I guess. Throw the film away. This ain't us. I mean, Danny, yes, you are absolutely right. Let's just throw this one away. Like, forget it ever happened. We're officially halfway through the season. So, you know, week 10, we're coming for you. Falcons, we are coming for you guys. David Hellman, who also works for the Dallas Cowboys, said, Cowboys have lost plenty of head scratchers over the years, but those games are usually dramatic. 2019 against the Jets came down to the wire. 2013 versus the Matt Flynn Packers, same thing. Can't remember them getting their butts, I'm going to say butts, so thoroughly kicked as such a big favorite. 
Yes, I agree with that. Um, I haven't seen a game this bad in a long time either. Hopefully we don't get any more of these. But you know what? We're going to end on a good note here because Cowboys Public Relations said with that sack, Micah Parsons has 3.5 sacks on the season, joining DeMarcus Ware, Victor Butler, and Anthony Spencer as the only Cowboys linebackers to record at least three sacks in a rookie season. That is what I'm talking about. That is how we're ending this show. Thanks so much for tuning in. To Cowboys Flashback, I'm Britt Johnson.